you know, when you do a show like Ultra Ranger for so long, you start to run out of things to do for uh, opening bits. Um, well, there's there's four Ultraman right there in front of you. Yeah, two two for me and two for you. Four greatest of all time. You know, Jeed, Taro, Dinah, and, and, and Zafi. Ooh, Zafi. Hey, you got a problem with Zafi? Yeah, he never had his own show. Well, um, if he did have his own show, do you think he would swallow the roll call? Explorer from the unknown, Yellowcaster, Autogar. Loyal and loud, Pinkmaster Lane! Paying respect to the original Japanese heroes, Radio Sentai Cast Ranger, Ultra Ranger. Yes, I think he would. <laughs> Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Ultra Ranger episode 48, the podcast where we talk about Ultraman's past, present, future. Godzilla and all kaiju in between, and this week we're definitely talking about Godzilla. For starters, we saw Godzilla city on the edge of battle. It was cool. Yeah. I mean, Mega Godzilla actually wasn't in it, but biggest false advertising ever. Yeah, like they showed him off and everything, and then all we got was, oh, here's his head. Oh, by the way, he morphed himself into a city. It's like. Like, that's cool, but, like, I was expecting to see Mecha Godzilla. And still, they had this amazing, perfect fucking plan, and just, like, still it wasn't enough. Still, Godzilla just was able to fucking Deus Ex Machina his way out of it. What am I fighting for? Yeah, pretty much. And, like, there's, like, Mothra people. Like, there's, like, humans that, like, fuse with Mothra's DNA, and they worship a Mothra egg. Basically, to quote Bill Murray... Dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. And then we found out that King Ghidorah is the most powerful fucking thing in the universe. Yeah. Yeah. Suck it, Marvel. We did that after credit scene better. What uh, you got? Oh, you got a joke after credit scene? That, that's not good. That's so, not good part, part two is good. But I'm looking forward to part three. Because I think part three is going to be like the... the Really, the the hard one. The, the hammer and the, the nail. The serious one. Everything, every, all the chips are down. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It's Gunner Bucci? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Everyone's just going to die. Watch, they'll just, like, spine, like, they'll be looking in the city and they'll be like, oh, what's this button? Mech mode? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are you? I am Metroplex. No, no. Who are you? I am Trypticon. You can be whatever you want, big guy. I mecha Godzilla now. I can be whatever you want, big guy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, it was it was okay. Agar actually watched the dub of the movies. Yeah, I actually well not uh, the second one, but I watched a bit of the first one because I didn't know there was a dub. Oh, I knew there was a dub. I didn't know there was a dub to we, these we movies. Were just, yeah, we were just like, no, we're watching Japanese because that's how we have to do it. Yeah, I just thought it was automatically Japanese. Yeah, and which the dub's not that bad. I will say. If you, if I'm going to watch it, I'm going to watch in the Jap, like the the original Japanese audio with English subtitles. But just if you just want to like sit back and relax and watch it, the dub's fine. Yeah. That's still, still fucking awesome in that movie. Just he's, it's just, he's so it, smart. It, it, it must have been thunder. You think we're gonna forget that roar? And yes, as Lane mentioned, we got our uh, Ultraman Dinah and Ultraman Zafi uh, vinyls. Lane's is Dinah's, mine is Zafi, because Zafi's my favorite Ultraman, and Dinah is one of Lane's five's favorite. Yeah. Because you have five fucking favorites. Well, let me see. You got, you got Blyle, no, you got G, Blyle Dinah. G, Dinah, Victory. And uh, Victory's kind of looks like it might be on the list. Soon. In 80? Yeah, I like 80. <laughs> Proceed to purchase any vinyl. Lena! Ha, joke's on you. There is no AD vinyl. What? There, there is. It just got released this earlier. Oh, cool. Alright, so uh, going on to news. Uh, we're going to be up... Uh, here's a little update from the second toy catalog from Ultraman Rube. 
So this confirmed that uh, they fused together to become Ultraman Rube, and the uh, their transformation device is called the get this the Kiwami Crystal. God damn it! And you equip it into the Rube Corin. Hmm. A chakram. 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 Yes. Yeah, chakram. That's what's pronounced. Is, is it like the discus thing? Yeah, it's like the it's like those things you hated on kiwi arms. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So so it's kind of like what the people in the Black Panther movie were using. In a way. Yeah, and it's it's one of my favorite character from Soul. One of my favorite characters from Soul Calibur Baldo uses. He uses oh. he uses uh, chakram. Like I don't mind them. I just don't like how on kiwi arms they were, just, they were giant slices of kiwi. They were so too like, big. What was the point? I didn't like how like floppy they were. If it, they were like. Like, it, smaller? I wouldn't mind Well, it was, the, it was supposed to be the irony of Michi being such a small guy that he was using such a big form because he needed it because he was weak. So it's like, oh, I need a strong form. Weak-ass bitch. Uh, oh, we got better close to those fucking kaijus. Yeah, and we got uh, the names for the new kaijus. So from left to right, top to bottom, uh, we got uh, Gregorio King. So Gregory King. Yeah, Gregory King. Uh, Gregorio Regi- Regina. <laughs> In Lady, in Lady Ports, Canada, Regina. Uh, Grand King Megalos. Yeah. Megalos was a kaiju from Ultraman X. And Kamisori Demaga. Demaga. So, wait. So Gregory, so, yeah, so Gre- Gregory, Grand gets, King. Gregory gets two extra forms. Wow, good job, Gregory. Yeah. And at the bottom of the page is the final, like, endgame villain, Reg... Regocyte? I guess so. I don't know. How, how would you pronounce that? Re- Regus? Re- Regocyte. Regocyte? Yeah, Regocyte. He looks cool. He does look cool. Looks like a dragon. It, it looks like, he looks like, like a... Like a magi- it, honestly, it looks like if Torin and... Uh, what, was, what was like Evil Torin? Oh, uh... Fuck, I can only remember his Power Rangers counterpart name right now. Uh, Doomwing. Anyways, evil evil Torin. They 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 look looks like they're just fused. This looks like something Kaiba would have in his deck. All right, Yugi, here's my newest card. Ring of Sight in attack mode. And then Yugi would pull out the winning card. <laughs> what the fuck though? That's cool. That like a, 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 a all original kaiju in a new Ultimate series just has he has like gets two extra. Forms. Yeah, two extra forms, and then, you know, just revamps of old kaijus. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> oh, what the Belial Crystal. I will get it. Yeah, it comes in set five, which is Ultraman Ginga Victory, Ultraman Saga, and uh, Gregory... Grigio King. Gregory King. Gregory King. Gregory. King Gregory. <laughs> King Gregory the second. King Gregory the second. Don't ask what happened to the first one. We murdered him. <laughs> yeah, you see a picture of him holding like holding up a cup of tea. <laughs> Hello there. Hello, My name is so Gregory there. King. The I second. am your end. And then uh, set six comes with Ultraman Jack, Ultraman Orb Trinity, uh, Gregory Vagina. <laughs> Gregio <laughs> Regina. What the fuck? Like, I don't... I can't take that name seriously. Look. <laughs> it's the name of the capital city of Saskatchewan, a province in Canada, is Regina. Just every time I think of that, though, I think of uh, the show... For... It, it, you don't know... You probably don't know the show. It was an animated cartoon called Forget About It. And it was about a mafia family... Oh, yeah. Being put into the FBI and they moved to Saskatchewan. Yeah, I heard about that show. It was really funny. And then in Manitoba, they have a town called Flinflon. I remember in the For Better or For Worse cartoon, there's like a guy was doing. Uh, Wait, Michael's friend was doing stand up. He's like, there were like Michael's friend friend was doing a stand up comedy bit. And he's just like, sounds like it sounds like the like car lights going off on, or like a turn signal going off on a car. Flynn, 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 Flynn. <laughs> so bad. Go watch the for better or for worse cartoon. It, it'll it'll hit you in the feels. You know what? I might actually watch it when we're done recording because <laughs> I missed that show. Yeah, no, it was really good. Farley. 
Farley. I love Farley. And here's a news article that I forgot about last the week. The Ultraman Room Blu-ray box announced. And oh boy, look. On one side there's Rosso and the other side's blue. Oh no. <laughs> It'll contain the first 13 episodes of the series. And we'll have a runtime of 325 minutes. Uh, the box will include a 24 page uh, full color booklet as well as a special disc with extras. The extras include a making of featurette as well as a family talk commentary for episode one featuring the entire Minato family. I love the sister. She's so cute. Okay, that's cute. Is that getting like the director or the producer? It's literally just the characters themselves. Just be like, hey, here's how we grew up. Uh, the desk will also include a creditless version of both the ending and opening themes, as well as some teasers and commercials for the TV series aired in the leap up to the premiere. The box itself is a special three-sided box case. Oh, there you go, Gar. That's your favorite. Mm -hmm. your, your favorite fucking creditless opening and endings. You love that shit. Because I remember for the longest time, like, the ending part of the opening for G, you just wanted that fucking wallpaper with no credits, credit list. And I so still just, didn't get it. I know. Well, I mean, if you buy the G Blu-ray, you can. Oh, yeah, Lynn. I totally got $300 to spend on. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> it's on my way right It's on its way right now. Fuck, hell. Do we still have that PS4? <laughs> yeah, like, um, if you go up... Go up again. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Look at, look at those cases. Those are nice. Mm -hmm. And chances are box number two will have Ultraman Rube on it together. Like the fusion. <laughs> That's the third Ultraman in the series. It's not, it's not a whole brand new Ultraman. It's just the first two Ultraman fused into one. Well, Subaraya Productions qualifies that as a new Ultraman. I mean, apparently that's the rule. Every time two Ultraman fuse, it's a new like, Ultraman. Like Ultraman Legend? Saga? Even fucking Ginga Victory counts as their own separate Ultraman. Wow. Amazing. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. I can't wait to see this Ginga Victory. Oh, you'll see it next week. Oh, yeah. So, uh, the box set will cost 23,760 yen and will come out November 22nd in Japan. Nice. Hey, you want an Eisentech uh, calendar? Yes. Is this going to be several, like, graver photo, sexy photos of just fucking Makoto Eisen? Uh, Super Mario has revealed a calendar featuring Eisentech president Makoto Eisen. Yeah. The self-proclaimed... Evan Gellist of Love and Goodwill is the president of the Technological Super Corporation that put Ayaka City on the map. Calendar will feature Eisen's various maxims preaching strength and courage that he often quote in the quotes in the TV series. A.K.A. his proverbs. Wow. Just. <laughs> That's so cool. This is literally Super Eye's... This is Super Eye's Dan Kuroto. It's like, hey... That character was really popular in over at Toei. Let's try to make our own version. Oh there. god, you, then you're gonna fucking hate him by the end of the series because he's gonna be like super cuckoo well, no. and have a huge god complex. Well, no, the difference is though, Lane, is that Dan Kuroto started out good and then he became that. No, I, he didn't start out good. Dan Kuroto was always evil. Well, no, he was. He just he just kept his craziness in check. For a while, and then when he got exposed for who he actually was, then he just wasn't afraid to hide himself anymore. Yeah. And he just went fucking crazy. And that's why I kind of didn't like him anymore. Here, Aizen's already cuckoo for coconut. Uh, coconuts. Coconuts. Uh, Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and what, <laughs> oh, oh co Cocoa Puffs. No, I'm not in that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> just, just look at that photo as well. Just, oh god, what am I doing? <laughs> Do my life to make a calendar. <laughs> Do you think he's gonna pose naked with the rube jar? <laughs> one rube crystal for each of his balls. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> Just rube crystals on his nipples is like. Oh. Uh... Okay. Select them, Kristen. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Uh, Premium Bandai announces Ultra Replica. Evolt Truster and Blast Shot, a.k.a. Ultraman Nexus's transformation device and handgun. So, 
fuck Ultraman Cosmos then, because we literally just skipped over his transformation device. Yeah. And they'll probably make they'll probably make it later. Hey, I want the wand. <laughs> If you really think about it, Ultraman Cosmos' transformation device is a wand. Yay! I want Dinah's uh, life flasher. One day we'll have them. The only question is, are they going to do Nexus's... Or, not Nexus, but are they going to do Max and Mabius because they were wrist-mounted wrist, wrist morphers? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Anyways, uh, the Evolve Truster is... Yeah, the Evolve Truster is the transformation device that allows various Nexus hosts... Uh, Various Nexus hosts? He has more than one host? Yeah. Throughout the show? Nexus is kind of a whore. Oh my god. That's awful. You can't even stick to one fucking guy? Well, well, there was one guy who was the main. Okay. But there were other people. What the fuck? (laughs) That's stupid. Imagine it like Kaiza. Kaiza and Fize. There were a ton of people, and then there was just the one guy that you know. Constantly. Yeah, but they weren't, like, it wasn't that the fucking Kaiser Bell or Fives gear chose them. It's just the fucking Orphanox were like, that's a really expensive, powerful piece of technology. We want to use it for our own personal gain. They stole it. The Orphanox just used it because they wanted more power. That was it. That's cool, though. I like. It. Wait, Dexus has a gun? Or was it, like, it's human gun? H- human gun. Okay. No, my Nexus has a gun. Or fuck the Schwein thing. Pull Cappy away. Go, go, gadget gun. <laughs> uh, sh- <laughs> that needs to be a shirt when it, whenever we get the shirt designs. Just, just, just fucking Tommy is stabbing the car. No, uh, no, no, just, just one of us being hit. Just, just sh- <laughs> sh- sh- <laughs> sh- sh- go, 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 go. Uh, so yeah, it's, there's apparently Ooh, there with, is Nexus forms. Yeah, Nexus has four forms. There's the red form, uh-huh. the blue form, uh-huh. his default form, which is the gray one, and Ultraman Noah. Oh. Okay, Noah looks cool and the red one looks cool, but the other two look boring. Ultra Red one gets an Ultra Act, blue one gets an Ultra Act, Noah gets an Ultra Act, fuck the gray one. The the base form! Didn't get an Ultra Act, but the or- other forms did. Does that sound familiar? Kiva! Kiva's never happening. <laughs> but they announced it'll happen this uh, year. Uh-huh. Still haven't seen it. They, got, they, got, they have five months. They have five <laughs> months left to fucking release Essence Figure Kiva. Knowing our luck, it'll happen tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Car Essence Figure Kiva. Yes! Uh, the Ultra Replica Evil Truster has four modes for four forms. Oh my goodness, that's a tongue twister. Uh, d- d- the gun will have LED sounds. Okay, here we go. Uh, the the Ultra Replica Evil Truster and Blast Shot Blast Shot set from Ultraman Nexus will go for ten thousand eight hundred yen. That is including tax and is scheduled to be shipped out in December twenty eighteen. Pre orders are beginning. Accepted until September t- September tenth, twenty eighteen. Not only I gave a shit about Nexus. Huh? Sorry, I almost gave a shit. Well, you told me the Nexus was okay. From what I understand, Nexus was meant to be the common rider Shin. Like it was the dark series. It was the dark but series. Then just the, audi- the audience was like. Oh. The, and then they changed the air time for the show. To, to be aired with the other superhero time shows. I don't know. Leading the show to be cancelled. Ow. And then they and then Super Rider brought the show Ultraman Max, which was basically back to form for Ultraman. I, I wanna watch a ep- couple episodes of Max for Ultra Ranger one day. Well we'll talk about Max. Maybe one maybe, day. maybe like in like March or May of next year we can do like Ultraman Max March or Max May or something. Ooh, well, Max March, I like the sound of that. Maybe we'll do that for March. Just do episodes of Ultraman Max? Yeah, we'll do like some episodes of Max, a movie maybe. There is no movie. You didn't get a movie? No, it was only a 40 episode series. Oh wow, okay. Well then yeah, let's watch some episodes of Max. We, we could talk about, um, in Ultraman X, Max shows up okay. for an episode, so we can talk about his first episode for that as a feature topic. Cool. Ne- Nexus shows up in episode X, so we can talk about the first episode of that. Cool. Ultimate X is literally just an anniversary season in secret. I thought Orphanox 
what was the anniversary season? No, Ultraman X treated... <laughs> okay, okay, so I'll get this. There's an episode of Ultraman X where Max shows up because it's Max's 10, 10 year anniversary. Fucking hell. Ultraman Nexus appears because it's been 10 years since his show ended. Uh, Ultraman Zero shows up because he's Ultraman Zero. Yeah, he's Zero Fear, has fear and everything now. <laughs> in which it leads to like probably the best shot I've ever seen Ultraman. Hmm. And Ultraman Ginga and Victory have a two part episode team up. Don't worry, Tommy is not in it. Good. Arissa's in it. Cool. Anyways, moving on. Yeah, moving on. We got crap down there. Yeah, we do. Alright, uh, Kaiju Girls Black Anime uh, movie has a cast in staff. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Gar, wait to be specific. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. That's what it's called. Kaiju Girls Black? What about Kaiju Girls? Just everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get my Kaiju Girls Black? Can you hang on a moment? I like, I, like my, I like my girls like I like my kaiju. Black. <laughs> I like my kaiju girls like I like my common rider. Black. <laughs> <laughs> That's Paul's fucking tagline. <laughs> yeah, you gotta remember that for Paul. Tell Paul. He'll fucking... I'm laugh. writing that down now. Yeah, he'll, he'll laugh his ass off like that. <laughs> I like my... Wait, wait, I like my... Like girls, like I like my Kamen Rider black. <laughs> Kamen Rider? <laughs> black. <laughs> Good job, Gar. We have fun here on Ultra Ranger. It appears that I'm illiterate and I've never actually had to spell it out loud Smile before. It. Smile it! Smile it! Alright, uh, the anime is part of Super Art Productions Ultra Kaiju's uh, Ginjika Kitkaku Project. Kitkaku. Uh, which takes monsters that have appeared in various Ultra series, such as Ultraman, Ultra 7, Ultraman Leo, and reimagines them as cute girls. What the fuck? It's so random. Um, yeah, there's no other actual information about okay. this, except for... Commander November 23rd. Yeah, November 23rd in selected theaters. Commander Holy Black... Shit, the boobs on that one. Look at the... Jesus, fuck! Commander Black, what happened? It just got hot. All right. You want to know the weirdest thing, though? Hmm? This is a full-on anime... Where if you actually watch the Kai, Kai, Kai Roos, Kaiju Girls uh, anime, they're all chibis. Oh, yeah. So it's like, whoa. Oh, hey, Pega. Oh, that is Pega. Yeah, it's Pega. There's no fucking hoodie and track pants well, and sneakers. Oh, okay, okay, it's a Pegusa. Okay. All right, uh, Subra has shown off the Kaiju Sep show that they announced with the other five shows. <laughs> I can see you having a shirt of that. King Jones is like an asshole. Hi. I love that. Wow. So Super Ryan announced the release of Kaiju Step picture book series for young children in Japan. The overall theme for Kaiju Step is the first step. It chronicles various firsts in the lives of children via, via monster stories. Firsts include running, falling, and growing up. So it's just the it's just your some of your favorite kaijus from Ultraman just as children. So so it's like it's like a treehouse show. God. It's oh, a is, there, is there a trailer? Yes, there oh, is. I gotta look at this. Okay. Alright, we'll be right back. So yeah, that was the trailer. Adorable. That's great. See? Like, they're even trying... Super is even trying to get Ultraman, like, little children into Ultraman. That's, that's, that's cute. I feel like this is something for, like, parents that, like, who grew up on Ultraman can show their little kids and then they can get their children into Ultraman. So, so, that's cute. Well, yeah, because uh, I will admit, unlike Kamen Rider and Super Sentai... The kaijus in Ultraman are more iconic. There is a show like, called Ultra Zone where it's just all about kaijus. Wow. But I love I love the fucking Gomera. <laughs> Go, Go, Gomera, as I've said time and time again, is my absolute favorite kaiju in all of Ultraman. Hi. Like Gomera, Mecha Gomera, like I love I love both of them equally. I like the Nova. Just the little keep little keep thing. He's so fucking cool. Right. Uh, yeah. Speaking of animes, we got some information about the Gridman anime. I'm good! In which it's just character artists, but. But. Biggest thing, biggest thing, if the picture will load. Oh, I think it's up there. Where is it? Where? No. Oh, there it goes, the thing. Okay, uh, so 
just like with the Ultimate Anime announcement, the Gridman announcement, they have a legit suit. Yeah, they actually made a fucking suit, and it looks incredible. And comparing it to the original Gridman outfit? Yeah, like the original Gridman is right beside him. He looks like shit. No, it still looks good. It's just you can see how much he's been modernized in like today's standards. And he looks incredible. Hey, you. Uh, the guy she told me not, uh, not to worry about. You know what he actually kind of reminds me of? He looks like if like, Gridman fused with Ultron. Kind of has like Ultron's head. Yeah, I can see it. Strings. There are, all, there are no grids on me. <laughs> Way to make Pinocchio sound dark. Yeah, right? Jesus. Well, just, you just notice just how dark the original Gridman outfit is, though. Like, just look. Well, I mean, when you look at him when he fights and stuff, it was always super dark and, like, stormy wherever he was, because he was in a computer. Yeah, but it's like, his his shoulder pads are white, where the rest of him is like... Actually, now that I think about it, too, like... Tron. Tron also... The grid also took, took place in a computer. And it was always stormy. What's with computers and being stormy? Why is it stormy inside a computer? Megabyte. Yeah! When Megabyte fucking took over the Web Wars, happened storm. It was just constantly <laughs> stormy. What the fuck? That's so dumb. That's so weird. God. Oh, god damn it. Wow. But yeah, that... The, that is so cool that they made an actual suit of it, and it looks awesome. It does look gorgeous. That, that's pretty fun. Make a figure of that, please. Figure art. Oh. oh. Yo, what are those things there? Oh, it's his accessory things, like he, like, that had in the original show. Oh, like, and those are, like, the top ones as well? Maybe. Maybe they're, like, different. Or, like, oh, different yeah. attachments? Oh, neat. Shit, man. He has a fucking sword? Yeah, of course he has a sword. It looks like it's just, like... It is, like, replaces his arm with it or something. No, there's his hand right there. Oh, no. Yeah, no, right. his arm goes into the sword. Shit. He, uh, we can't, I can't wait to talk about this. We're going to start to see if we can get Red Cast or Joe Raven on with us so we can watch. Because, one, he grew up with uh, Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. And, B, too. it's anime. Yeah, it's anime. Raven will watch it. Hey, Raven will watch Cool. We got a picture of some of the kaijus. <laughs> the, the, the dragon one. <laughs> the middle one looks like like a like a an unfinished freaking Palkia. He, do, he doesn't look finished. He looks like Palkia. He does. <laughs> the other one kind of reminds me of Death Charge a bit. Yeah. It's like a dolphin. <laughs> and then we go to the bottom. There's a girl, I guess. I guess maybe, the, maybe the singer? Of the... Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, but... Wait, yeah, see? I, I uh, like the original Gridman suit. Oh, yeah, I love it, too. Just... I just don't understand. It's, like, white for the legs, white for the shoulder arm, like, for the, uh... Oh, what, what's this part of the body called? Oh, the gauntlets? Yeah, the gauntlets. And then the rest of them is just, like, a dark charcoal gray. I don't know. Oh, he still has the transformation device. That is so fun. I want a figure of it. I'll make a figure. Well, if they don't, we at least got a soft, a soft final figure. There you go. Oh, and they're re-releasing the original. Yeah, they are. Yeah, uh, so they are making a modern Gridman and a original Gridman. See, man. that's how you do it. That's how you treat a reboot nice and well. You not only make one of the new, but you also re-release, like, the old. And this is how they're, uh, defri- de- defriation? No. I don't know. Differentiate? Oh, differentiate. Yes. Yeah. Of uh, them. So, the new one is simply just called Gridman, where the original is Den- Denko- Denko Chojin Gridman. Oh, okay. So, it's like, Again, just you, the guy she told you not to worry about. <laughs> no, I like that final. It does. I, just, I don't know. I just always like the original Gridman suit. I've it, always it's liked simple. it. I like 
like I, again, I don't know why, but my favorite part of that suit is the mouth. I just like the mouth on him. Well, you like well, you grew up with Power Rangers, so you're used like the lips. That's probably why I like Belial because like he's got like that jaw with the like actual working mouth. <laughs> Here comes the crimson chin. <laughs> The Nigga Chin! <laughs> that's a meme. Nigga Chin was a thing in the show. Yeah, no, people, people, it's been, that's been a meme where, like, they take, like, different streamers reacting to stuff, and then it just shows, like, Crips and Chin, <laughs> and then he walks out. It's just the Nigga Chin. The Nigga Chin! And he's like, oh my god! Oh my god! It's super funny. Uh, these look. Full release details are becoming a Okay, so there's no price or release date yet. Hopefully it's soon. Because mm-hmm. these just look beautiful. The <laughs> Nigga <laughs> the Oh, that was Mr. Crocker. Alright. That was fucking Jay Leno voicing the Crimson Chin. Do I know the funniest thing? Huh? Apparently he would only be in the recording booth for like thirty minutes, and then he would go back to his studio to do his sh- to to do his show. His show was literally just a block away. You get why they got Jay Leno to voice him, right? Why? Because Jay Leno has a big ass, long ass chin. Oh, is that the joke? Yeah, that's totally why. If you look at the picture of Jay Leno, he's got a fucking long ass chin. I like the joke that they did in the Pixar movie, Jay Limousine. That's so cool. I love the naked chin. The naked chin. I like his other villain, the bronze kneecap. Oh, fuck the bronze kneecap. <laughs> All right, and our uh, last uh, Gridman update is Candy Toys of the original Gridman and his God Xenon accessories. Oh, all right. He has a sword and shield. I forgot. It's so cool. So if you don't, holy want... shit! Hi, Optimus Prime. I am Optimus Prime, bitch. Hey, guys, quickly. Here's a picture of Jay Leno. See, he's got a long ass chin. Yeah, he does. Yeah, so I think that's the joke. <laughs> so yeah, just. <laughs> it's Optimus Prime. <laughs> Transformers were the big thing in the nineties. I'm surprised fucking Hasbro didn't sue. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's because it didn't turn into a truck. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's so... Oh, and then it becomes his own Megazord. Yeah. Wow. I, I forgot, man. It's been so long. Uh, unconfirmed, these figures are... Okay, they're, so they're kind of like the Shodo line that Build has. Uh, the Super Mini Plus are entirely new line of toys. Oh. But closest thing that they can compare them to... Or show those. Okay. So, these look cool. Yeah, these look... Oh, my God. And he comes with more arms. I honestly wouldn't mind having a Gridman figure. And this is honest, this is probably, like, the best way to get it. Because it's either this or the Ultra Act that came out a few years ago. I need to get more into the fucking, like, Ultraman Toku shows. Like, I need to watch more. I want more. Well, honestly, I'm I'm like the whole time we've been recording this, I've been thinking about I've just been thinking about Ultraman eighty the whole time. So I want to watch eighty. I, uh, I need I need one Showa era Ultraman show in, in under my, your belt. Under my belt, I need one. So Un- under that copyright belt. I'm gonna watch eighty. The one about a te- uh, Ultraman who disguises himself as a teacher, and if anyone discovers that he's Ultraman eighty, he has to leave the planet forever. <laughs> Well, I'm gone. It's so stupid, but I love it. I have a PhD. Did about to get schooled, AD. And the best part is, AD's on Crunchyroll. Yeah, AD is legally available on Crunchyroll. Yeah, so I'll go watch him. What? Um. So, cool. yeah, hopefully, uh, we get their uh, dra- dra- the Thunder Jet, the Twin Driller, and the God Tank. That is an amazing name for a and, fucking tank. And apparently the combined form is called Thunder Grit Man. I hope they do the Dragon Man. Can't have Grit Man without that Dragon Zord knockoff. See that picture I sent, I like quoted you on Twitter where someone took Q Reno and just like made it look like Gao King? Q Reno Gao Me? Yeah. They like combi- they like painted all the Q Tama whatever the fuck they're called. As, like, the different Gao vehicle Zords, Gao Ranger Zords, and then just made a Gao King Kureno. I don't remember that. Oh, okay. I'll show you later. It's yeah. cool. 
Alright. And our last bit of news is mostly all Godzilla. Ah, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> and there's Lane's Nightmare for tonight. Whoa! So, oh, is that Shin Godzilla? Yeah, that is Shin Godzilla. God, Jesus Christ. So, VR Zone Shinjuku is a virtual reality arcade in Japan owned by Bandai Namco Entertainment. And VR Zone Osaka is scheduled to open in the fall. The official website for VR Zone Osaka has announced, the, announced that among the new attractions will be Toho's famous monster, Godzilla. Godzilla VR attraction will put players in a seat of a helicopter... As they fly around, the f- fly around fighting Godzilla himself. You yeah. know, I had a dream about this. I think we were in Hamilton, and I walked outside, and which it's like people are screaming, it's like, "Oh, it's Godzilla! We need to run!" It's like, "Oh, don't worry, we'll be fine." I walk outside, and like I see him just down the street. It's Shin Godzilla. I'm like, "Okay, we're fucked," because that's Shin Godzilla. We're fucked. Yeah, if it was '98 it, Godzilla. We'd be fucked. Yeah. Like, the only way for us to defeat him was to get Eiji Tsuburaya himself, because he's his dad, and he will listen to his dad. Freeze him. Freeze him like you did in the movie. That's, that's terrifying. I, I could not do that. You couldn't pay me enough money to fucking go experience that. Imagine, imagine that, you woke up, looked out your window, and that was right in front of you, roaring. Mommy. I just shit my pants. Pants to four, be four, darkened. Four times over. <laughs> Among the other attractions coming to Osaka based location are Evangelion VR, the Tamashi no Zabaso, or. E- Unicorns, Sky High, Die, Mass Destruction, Galaga Fear, Dragon Quest, Dragon Ball, and. Super Kamehameha, and cool. CG Star Life Idol ish. Prison Night. Hmm. Cool. Uh, tickets for VR Zone Osaka will become available on August 23rd. Cool. Sucks we can't go to it. Yeah. VR Troopers. I screamed. I honestly screamed. You did. Premium Bandai has revealed its latest monster arts, and it is 1962 Godzilla. Oh, yeah. A.K.A. the Godzilla that appeared in Godzilla. King Kong versus Godzilla. Now you just need to figure out it's fucking King Kong. That's what I'm hoping for. That if this does well, they'll release a SH Monster Arts 1962 King Kong. Complete with tree, which you can use to stuff down your 1962 Godzilla's throat. It needs to come with a tree. If this Godzilla does not come with a rock, broken. Yeah, this Godzilla needs to come with a rock, and the King Kong needs to come with a tree. <laughs> Yeah, no, seriously. Uh, the figure is, depicts Godzilla as he appeared in the 1962 film King Kong vs. Godzilla. The figure comes with many ray effect parts and exclusive display stand set. Uh, the product is available for pre-order of 9,936 yen and expected to ship out in December 2018. So, top three favorite suits. 1964 suit, 2014 suit, Godzilla Earth. Uh, I don't know, I just... I like the 1962 design just for how cheap it looks. 64 suit because those fucking derpy eyes. It's so just, derpy. It's so derpy. I, I'd love to get the Monster Arts of 1964. It just looks so cute. <laughs> That's really cool. I want it. I know you do. Alright. So San Diego Comic Con happened. Uh, this over the course of the weekends of episode 47 and 48. Oh, yeah. And there was a teaser trailer dropped for Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Well, there was a teaser trailer, and then there was an actual trailer. Yeah, and then the actual trailer came out. And holy shit, were we blown away by it. We were literally screaming. Like, we saw Mothra larvae. We saw Mothra, like, a shot of, like, Mothra with, like, its wings spreading out, and they were... Fucking huge. We saw Rodan coming out of a volcano because that's what Rodan does best. If, if you're gonna if you're gonna show Rodan in a fucking Godzilla movie, he's gotta come out of a volcano. And then we see like a shot of like Rodan like flying over a bunch of houses and just it flying over them destroyed them because of just the wind. And then we saw the shadows of King Ghidorah, and we see a bit of his eye in in one of the shots. He looks monstrous. And just. 
I'm sorry. I, I gotta put that scene on. Just that is bold. Just the music, just how it builds up, and then just oh. I really hope after this, just Super Eye is just like. All right, all right, America, you can do it. You can make movies as good as us now. Hold my beer. <laughs> all right, guys, what do we got? Um, 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 Shin Godzilla two? No, no. No, no, we can't do that. Well, I mean, we are getting from them, uh, like a Godzilla universe, like a con- consistent story of mm-hmm. movies. Yeah, because apparently, Kong versus or Godzilla versus Kong is the last film in this monster verse, sadly. And the rights are going back to Toho, and they're making their own cinematic universe. Hey, man, that's fine. Hey, that's four films. There are four great films. We also saw the Aquaman tra- uh, trailer for the Aquaman movie. I'm going to see it purely for Black Manta because I saw Black Manta in this trailer, and I was like, "Fuck yes, giant, giant head, eye lasers." That's what Black Manta's best for. That's also a black guy. <laughs> uh, uh, Ray. Not really. I mean, I mean, I think he in the comics too. He's uh, he's black guy. But anyways, like Black Manta is like one of the coolest fucking things in DC I've ever seen. Love him. And but yeah. The, the, oh yeah, there was one thing Cell mentioned. Mm-hmm. Like he actually asked us. It's like, how? Like, what do we think about them changing their? Like they're no longer called kaiju's, but titans. I think that's a more fitting name for them here. Kaiju doesn't really seem like... Because, like, that, that's what Pacific Rim called him, because, you know... Well, Del Toro's a big fucking kaiju nerd. <laughs> yeah. And then we just, like, we'll continue to call them kaijus in, uh, like, if we watch a Toho Godzilla movie, or we watch an Ultraman series. Yeah. But, like, if... No. Titans, that's an appropriate name for them in the, in the West. Yeah. It, it's just, you know, like, from Greek... Or monsters. Mon- like, like, you can either call them Titans or monsters. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's not, it's not Godzilla, King of the Titans. It's Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Mm-hmm. And, then, like, hell, even Godzilla in this fucking trailer looks fucking awesome. He, he does... Who is that actor at the very end? It's like Long Live the King. Oh, that was Tywin Lannister from fucking Game of Thrones. I can't believe he's in it. That's just, amazing. My coworker Adam, he uh, he mentioned this. He's like, did, did they just take all the popular people from like the last five years and just shove them all into this movie? Like all I need to do, is, all they need, all they need to complete this movie is put like Peter Dinklage or something in it, and, and, and there you go. Peter Dinklage. Or, or just Chris no, Pratt. No, no. Who are you? And it's like it's Peter Dinklage. He's like. I think I have an idea. Slip some of the papers. It says Project Mecha Godzilla. Don't joke. <laughs> Don't. Do you know how fucking happy I would be if we got Mecha Godzilla in one of these legendary picture movies? I would die. <laughs> no, no, it's a- the closest <laughs> thing we've gotten to a proper Mecha Godzilla in out in the West was Ready Player One, and I loved that Mecha Godzilla design. It's fucking awesome. Just. Jesus. Christ. Well, speaking of which, there it is right there. And speaking of which, uh, Ready Player One came out on Blu-ray this week. I didn't get it because money. I know. We don't make money off of Walter Ranger. I hope so one day. Maybe once we start We're doing that. sponsored by Super Eye, but we'd like to be. <laughs> but, <laughs> maybe once we start the rebranding, maybe we can start, you know, maybe we can start making some money off of this. Maybe. Maybe. Which is, holy shit, all the people in this fucking... <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. So yeah, once again, Godzilla King of, King of the Monsters will be coming out May thirtieth, twenty nineteen. We are seeing this shit in, a- in I almost said IMAX. IMAX. Oh yeah, no, we're going to go fucking see this in IMAX. I can't wait. And the great thing is, Ken Watanabe is coming back. So Mr. Let them fight. So Let them fight. That. Honestly, if we don't see Kick Ass in this, I won't be mad. I don't really care. It's a go- Wait, it's a God's own movie. When did they ever have continuous I characters? I feel like this is sort of kind of a soft reboot, like a little bit of a soft it's reboot. A t- oh, oh, you mean how? Bit. You mean how like uh, Universal did with the monster cinematic universe? Oh, first we're gonna do wi- uh, the Wolfman. That didn't do well. Oh, oh, did we say Wolfman was the first one? We meant Dracula Untold is gonna be the first one. That didn't do well either. Okay, the Mummy is now our first one. Didn't do well. You know what? Fine, we're done. Yeah, don't, don't. I'm a fan of Tom Cruise, and I still haven't seen The Mummy yet. To, to think, Godzilla is one of the oldest cinematic universes. 
But before Marvel, before the Planet of the Apes, or Star Wars, or Star Wars, we have Star Trek, or Star Trek. There was Godzilla yeah. in his little cinematic universe. You know, think, no, you know what I think we need to do hmm? in May? Hmm? Like, for this mo- movie coming up? I think we should talk about the Rodan movie, the Mothra movie, and the King Ghidorah movie. Agreed. Just to lead up to this. Yeah. Holy shit, we still haven't watched Go- Gamera, any Gamera movies. Oh, yeah. I've been, well, we've been busy with work. Yeah. And Ultra Ranger. Yeah. In life. Well, don't worry, Gamera. We'll get to you. Yeah. Don't. Sorry, Gamera. We, we love you. I am petting an imaginary Gamera head. <laughs> Just buys Gamera soft final. I'm sorry, Gamera. <laughs> I'm so <sorry>, Gamera. <laughs> you, you know what? Maybe that's the thing you and I can do. We just go half season on the Gamera vinyl figure and we'll just keep them. It'll be just a shared a shared vinyl for both of us. And just have a little tag saying we're sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's a little sign that says we're sorry. All right. So, right. uh, Anyways. So, since... This completely caught me off guard again. But uh, since Ultrain Ginga S is in its final episode, we will be talking about Ultrain Group Episode 3 first. So, in which, since the uh, CD for the full opening has come out, play the new high-quality bumper! Woo! So, Ultra and Rube, episode three. Welcome to Eisentech. Oh my god. A- oh my god, just, this, was, this was fun. It's Eisen. He's the bad guy! As we fucking predicted! Like, we oh. first talked about, about this guy in, like, the news scans and shit. I was just like, this guy's gonna be the bad guy. Because if, if Bleach, if the anime Bleach has taught me anything, you never ever trust a man named Aizen. You know what? That's the title of this week's episode. You can never trust a guy named Aizen. You can never trust a guy named Aizen. And that's why the thumbnail for this week is this going to be a picture of Uryu Ishida and Ichigo Kurosaki from Bleach tied up with Rosso and Blue's heads, respectively. And off to the side will be Forza and Meteor's heads. Because remember, in the live-action version, Gantaro is being... Gantaro is playing Ichigo and Meteor is playing... uh, and Nadeshko is Odihime. That's This director crazy. just wanted the Forza review. <laughs> hey, I mean, they talked about the fucking times they were on Forza, so that was cool. So who am I playing? Oh, you're playing his rival. And who is it? Oh, it's this guy. Oh, shit, I fucking played his secondary rider of him. All right, I'll just do what I did there. Plain and simple. But yeah, um, this episode is the Mr. Makoto Aizen focus episode. In which, you you know what it, it has occurred to me, Lane? Mm-hmm. It has occurred to me that so far we're three episodes in, and the whole entire series has taken, uh, has spanned over the last three days. Wow. Because there was the first day before they got their powers. There was day two where they got their powers. The following day, which was episode two, and then, okay, so, yeah. Sorry, four days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this the show has taken place over the course of four days now. And we're only on episode three. Alright. But that is some good continuity. That is good continuity. Also, we had Ichi watch this episode with us because I, I thought he would like Aizen. He, he thought it was he thought he was fun. Yeah. But yeah, so like uh, the Nana brothers just go to see Aizen because you know they like realize it's like oh yeah Aizen like knew your mother knew your mother and like you know he was a research partner with her, and so they go to see him to like see if they have if he has any questions about answers about the like the root crystals that are in the, in the diary. And yeah, so he like flies in on a fucking like jetpack. He he kind of remind me of a. Uh... Of a mega evolution of Mewtwo, how, how the mega evolution has like that. Loop. Oh, yeah, uh, Mewtwo that? Y or X or yeah. No Y? Yeah, Y yeah. with the little hoop thing. Mm-hmm. Hey, welcome to Eisen Tech. My name is Makoto Eisen. How may I help you? Yeah, and he like comes up with like a new proverb, and then immediately like the announcer, like the computer announcer, and darling, building, fucking just like no, 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 it wasn't darling. It was just another thing. It just like immediately uploaded the proverb out. He's like. Yeah, if you fly, 
Oh, oh, okay. Fly it at once a day. Uh, it's right here. A flight a day keeps the worries away. A flight a day keeps the worries away. And, oh yeah, and the little sister comes, uh, Asahi comes uh, with them. Because she's like, I want to come too. I love her. She is adorable. She is adorable. She's a great Let's addition. Let's go, come on. Yeah, she's a great addition to this fucking cast. Let's go, Vegas away. Come on. Um, right, guys, why is my man new? Why is my man Why is my man Why are you old to my man new drinking, bitch? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so one of the thumbnails is going to be Buggy and then his brother. He has no brother. I thought he had a brother. Well, we haven't seen his brother on the screen. Oh, no, but what about the other, like, fat guy? That wasn't his brother, that oh. was his friend. Oh, okay. I can't believe you thought that was just him. I mean, come on! It looked like him. Okay, um... Anyways, um, so yeah, so he, like, Eisen brings him around, like, them on around on a tour, and he's being super weird, like, he's moving weirdly. Uh, Asahi keeps fucking interrupting him, and I knew that was, like, fucking bothering the shit out of him. Because he was like, no, because he's, like, trying to tell a story and be all serious and, like, really cool, and then she's just like, Oh, what's that? And he's just like... Well, that's very nice, but kind of, I only have one thing to ask. What the hell is that? Um, and then, like, they find <laughs> these new, like, gravity, like, jumping boots, in which immediately she wants to fucking try them. And then I think she steals them. I think she does steal them. Just click your heel three times and there's no place like home. There's no place like home. Um, and then, like, yeah, we find out that Eisentech used to be Eisen Mech. And it was, like... They used to make mechas. It, it was a company that his father made. And then he was like, oh, I need, like, you know... We need to move this, make this company better, so I renamed it Eisentech and, like, took it over myself. Oh, I could make so many freaking Donald Trump jokes. Right? I think we all could make fucking Donald Trump jokes. My father, he gave me a small loan. A million dollars. No, of a million rube crystals. A million, million kaijus. A million kaiju. Um, and so, yeah, so they go to his office and, like, they talk to him about, like, it's like, oh, yes, I knew your mother, and, like... Oh, it was funny. Like, he saw me and was, like, super starstruck by him. So he's, like, so, like, Katsumi. Oh, yeah, he's, I, like, I'm, oh, I'm Katsumi Minato. He's, like, I, I, I'm, all, I'm, Kats, I'm also, I'm, I'm Katsumi Minato. No, no. No, he's Isami Minato. No, no, no. It's, like, oh, I'm Katsumi. I'm uh, Katsumi's uh, younger, younger, or oldest son. It's, like, that's Isami. <laughs> and it's just, like, it's, like, who are you? Oh, I'm Asahi, the, his, her daughter. She had a daughter? Clay pigeon. <laughs> Yeah, all of a sudden, Stone Bird falls onto, onto him. Is he dead? <laughs> I'm okay. Um, Which leads me to a theory, but we'll get to it. Uh, yeah. So then they, like, confront him about, like, the diary in the off, uh, in his office, and then, like, he compares... Which, he, like, he even brings up, he's like, okay, in all honesty, why are you guys here? Yeah, he's like, I know you're not here for fun. So they ask him, because he's like, oh, yeah, like, I heard about, like, a, le- a story about, like, you know, 1,300 years ago, a meteor landed on Earth, and it contained three things, and, like, he's, he's, he's using, like, for, com- for, like, a reference or whatever like that, he's using, like, a cookie, like, a cracker, and, like, he, like, smashes the cracker on the desk and stuff, and it's like, yeah, broken into three pieces, and, you know, two of them were, like, those Ultramen that we, that we saw, and then the other one was, was Gregory. <laughs> and just, and those two beings were, who told our man? Yes! Ultraman! Yeah, he actually says he's, Ultraman. In which, you notice just how different calling them, like, it, uh, it's, it honestly like weird, sounds like you're it, saying two different things. Yeah, it's weird hearing a Japanese person say Ultraman. Yeah, it's like, it's like, they call him Utolaman, mm-hmm. where we call him Ultraman. It honestly sounds like we're saying two complete, tomato, tomato. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, so, and then, all of a sudden, like, a kaiju uh, t- uh, comes in attacks, and it's... ga 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 Yeah, so it's gar ga Which, go, go watch episode two of Ultra Ranger for that and joke. And he's honestly a reference to the ancient, like, Greek myth- mythological monster, the Gorgon. Oh, the, Gorgon the Gorgon's Eye. It was just this monster that had a giant one singular eye, and it could turn you into stone. Oh, I thought it was like a Medusa thing. Uh, like thing. I think I think a Gorgon. I think the Gorgon was like a monster of Medusa. Is so. he a Gorgonite? No, that's good. I think that's what Ocula, Ocula was supposed to be based off of. Is he is he an emissary of the Gorgonites? 
No, I don't want to look up Gorgonzola. <laughs> Gorgonzola? What is a Gorgonzola? Gorgonzola's a cheese. It's like blue cheese. Oh, right. Gorgonzola. I knew that sounded familiar. But just dark. So oh, I'm... yeah, okay, yeah. It's based off Medusa. Medusa was Medusa was the name of a Gorgon. Oh, okay. Yeah, so then, like, yeah, that's why it's like the Gorgon's Eye. Greek facts with Ultra Rangers. Yep, yeah, hey, man, I love Greek mythology. It's fucking fascinating shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he has the ability to, like, turn people to stone, so it's cool. Like, he's got, like, he's got, like, three heads and, like, or, like, two so arms, just, heads yeah. for arms. He has two arms in which those are where the suit actor's hands are. Yeah, and then... And then he has two actual arms that do nothing. Yeah, and then the, uh, and then, like, the middle head uh, just has, like, an eye in the, in the mouth. Because he has two horns where his eyes should be. Where's Sonic when you need him? Just bounce him off the eye. And then, so then, like, they're all running away or whatever like that, and just, like, uh, Aizen runs into Asahi, and they're like, oh, where's your brothers? And it's like, oh, they told me to go on without them, and they went somewhere else. And he's like, hmm. Oh, so he, like, immediately suspects that they're fucking... He knows. He knows they're Rosso and Blue. And which, this is what I'm thinking. Might as well just say it now. It's revealed at, at the end of the episode that Makoto, or that Makoto Aizen has the Gargorgon uh, crystal, and the other, and then, you know, Black King and, uh, Gregory's. And, and apparently the fucker's been kidnapping people. In which, here's the thing, you know how he flew in? I have a feeling he flew up, summoned Gargorgon, flew back down. Yeah, and, and our, our theory for now is, which we're probably gonna be right, yeah. he's been kidnapping people and turning them into the kaijus. Yeah, cause think of what happened to that guy in episode two? Never, never, never seen from again. This guy gone. Yeah. In which this is that's theory one. Here's theory number two that I have. Eisen is a Vandal Savage of this universe. For those that don't know, Vandal Savage is a DC character, where he is from the first set of man. He was a caveman that learned, or like, he is a caveman that gained abilities from a meteorite or something and thus it made him live forever wow. i have a feeling aizen is from thirteen thousand years he, ago he, he summoned that meteor yeah in which he's an alien that has just been living for all these years and his father and aizen mech it was just him well the man knows how to dress nice for a caveman yeah I guess, I guess over the fucking thousands of years, he just, like, learned to talk properly. Oh, no, that was, like, his first thing. It's like, he learned how to speak. He, he, he just became really intelligent? Yeah. Okay. And the weirdest thing is that he, he still looks like a caveman. If you see, like, an animated version of him. Like, he still has, like, the broad forehead, the jump. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Like, he's still, like, ape man. Cool. Yeah, it must be a really cool folk. But I, I, I can imagine him and Gorilla Grodd fucking teaming up. <laughs> Just, oh yeah, and this is the episode that debuts the sidearm, the uh, Rube Sluggers. Yeah, honestly, it was pretty cool. I liked how they did it. It was kind of like a, I think it was like a reference to Zero and uh, Dulcer 7. So I kind of like that. I kind of They used their I, head. I kind of like how... The sluggers aren't actually a part of them, unlike with Seven and Zero. So it's like they kind of just manifest them. Yeah, and like Rosso uses uh, the dual wielding mode, which is cool, and then Blue uses the singular mode. And I liked that they're actually their 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 fighting has improve has been improving because like they actually they took them down pretty easily. Yeah. Like you can just see them like they kick together and they both grab them and like slam them onto the ground. And, Seismic like, toss. And it was it, no, and it was really impressive. So like, where I know that the choreography from these two are just gonna get like the fights with these two are gonna be so much better and they're gonna get so good. So and then uh, yeah, at one point uh, Gargo uh, Gorgon or whatever like he <laughs> the, the, the Gorgon Gorgonzolas. Gorgonzolas. <laughs> Yeah, the Gorgonzolas. That's where I remember. Yeah. It's false soul. Uh, rest in peace, Phil Hartman. Was uh, that Phil Hartman? That was Phil Hartman. Oh. I know, that was his last movie he did before he died. That makes me sad now. Yeah, I murdered him. That sucks. Oh, yeah, shit. Shot him in his home. Sh oh, damn. I thought he was stabbed. Yeah. Um. 
So then uh, he uh, turns blue into a stone. Schwap. <laughs> and then, which then, like, yeah, Rosso's just like, oh, I need to use my head. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, his, he- his head glows like. Oh yeah. That's and then serious. he slashes uh, Gargoron's eye, and then and to, and like, and you actually see like a slash mark on his eye, and then like his eye breaks, and then the it freeze the, the blue, freeze blue. Which, I feel sorry for that bird. Yeah. That, if that bird was averted, he lost a wing. Right. Shit. Damn. Um, Unless that was a legit just clay bird. Um, oh, and yeah, so, like, at one point, uh, the brothers or whatever, they, like, confront their dad about, like, it's like, oh, do you know about these? And it's like, oh, that was, like, your stuff, research, research that your mom worked on. She never really talked about it at home. Oh, yeah. She just a- wants sex all the time. <laughs> this is the episode that we also learned that their mother's name is Mio. Mio Minato. Yeah, Mio Min- Wow. In which they're... Sorry. We have frosties. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> You're like, ugh, that's <laughs> dirty. Well, okay, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> You're all light headed. Yeah. All right, let me talk for a second. All right. Uh, yes, yeah, so they defeat Gargorgon, and it was just like, it, it was really impressive how they were like using. I like it. Like, wrote, he's like, whoa, where'd you get those? Oh, he used my head. Sweet, I will too. And just whip. Okay. <laughs> Oh, and so, in the recap, like, uh, Blue ma- uh, saw me, he's like, oh, we should do poses, victory poses, like, when we win our battles, and Cosby's like, no, and Cosby's like, no, we're not doing that. How about now? How about now? So, you, you thought? Okay, so, um, Ushio, their dad, apparently gave her a nickname called Misi. Oh. Misi. Yeah. He's like, Misi, your mother. Your mother. Father, father. <laughs> Your mother. <laughs> no, no, it's just Makoto Eisen's revealed to be, like, their older brother. <laughs> I really hope Orb Dark isn't him, though. Oh, no, I feel like Guy is, like, kidnapped somewhere. Because, like, the guy that Eisen talks to at the end of the episode... The cowboy dude. Yeah, the cowboy dude that looks like Guy if he gained, like... 20 pounds and like or age 20 years yeah age 20 years and gained like 10 pounds yeah really just I have a feeling he has Guy locked up or he knows Guy he's a stab no and probably but, what he does is he corrupts the, the orb crystal and then that's how he makes orb dark and then he just like summons orb dark as his puppet and then Guy just shows up and becomes the secondary ultra of the series because, like, that's how Orb Dark's going to be introduced. It's going to just, like, you know, like, they he's keep defeating all the show kaijus. He keeps, defeating, he keeps defeating all the kaijus, so he needs a trump card. So he's like, this is my this is my ace. Ace in the hole. And summons <laughs> to Orb Dark. Because he knows Orb will kick their asses. Because it's like, oh, you guys can, you do guys do well uh, against fighting kaiju. How do you, how will you do against an actual Ultraman? Like, an, especially an experienced Ultraman. I just hope. Ultimate Orb Dark doesn't speak. Me neither. I kind of hope he just, like, just maybe like a little, like, kind of dark, but shh. Sh- yeah, exactly. Sh- just kind of like how, like, Genmu was in the early start of the series when we didn't know who he was. Just never, never said a fucking word. Oh, yeah, and the dad comes up with a new shirt called Thigh Rays. Yeah, because he fucking misunderstood the thing they said earlier in the show. So we got spaced out. In episode one. I want spaced out. Episode two. Apparently, the shirt said "I heart Ayaka City," and then shirt number three is Vibraves. We're gonna have twelve shirts. I hope. I hope, honestly, I hope every episode we get a new shirt. I'm hoping for that. I hope so. Hey, twenty-five shirts. That's easy to make up. Yeah. Hell, he'll make a roof shirt. He'll make like a rosso. That that will be the final shirt. It'll be like. It'll be like a pencil art of, like, Ruben Rosso. Yeah. And for the Rube Crystal Navi, we actually got a kaiju this time. The Flame Beast uh, Grigio Bone. Gregory. Gregory. As we know him. Apparently yes. his height is 60 meters, so he's 10 meters taller than the average Ultraman. And then uh, 62,000 tons. And his special attack is called the Bone Breather. Bone Breather. 
This sounds like a Digimon like attack name. Bone Brailar. Huh? Good old Gregory. Can't wait to see King Gregory and Gregory Regina. <laughs> Mecca Gregory. Um, yeah, and then next week we get apparently like a baseball episode because Isami plays baseball. Katsumi. No, it's Is- it was Isami. No, 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 it was Katsumi who gave up his dream. Oh. To help his family. Oh, okay. Oh, poor guy. That's why Isami's still in college. Ah, uh, okay. We just don't see him in college. You know what? I think that's what they should do for Power Rangers. Forget high school. Let's do college. Right? Because I feel like it would be more mature mm-hmm. than high school. High school is kind of lame. There you go. No one wants to remember high school. Everyone wants to remember college time. Alright. On to the final episode of Ging S. Episode 16? Yeah. Battle for Tomorrow. It's a pretty good finale. Yeah. I actually have to say. I honestly forgot that episode 16 was the final episode. Right? Granted, the show is split into two seasons, but... I don't know, I'm so used to the whole 25 episode thing now. I know you are. But no, it was, it was good. I mean, fucking... Like, I think Acceler kind of got taken out really stupid. And what? Like, he didn't have, like, a fitting end to a, to, to him, especially since we had him the whole sh- the whole series. He kind of was just, like, he was boasting <laughs> about, uh, boasting about, like, how awesome he was and how he had, he's going to have the ultimate body and stuff. And then just, he gets blown up by fucking Dark Lugiel. Pretty much. That, that was the end of it. So, like, we could we could quote him with Patrick. <laughs> fucking ever. Machinations of my mind are an enigma. Just spilled milk. A carton of milk. Carton? What's a carton of milk? <laughs> Where I come from, milk comes from a bag. Right. Hashtag we live in Canada. Yep. But, yeah, just Dark Lugia literally a blur rates. Just... I was sad. I was actually just sad. And he turns him into a fucking spark doll, and I'm just like, I'm like, I want an Alien Acceler vinyl. There is one. You just I, need I know, to look I can't, hard. I can't find it. I will look one for you. I'm gonna look two. <laughs> <laughs> the episode will be right back after these messages until we find a fucking no. Acceler. No, but uh, the one thing that I noticed in this episode is that. Dark Lugio kind of doesn't work well as a kaijin. No, like, actually he was... I have to say he was actually really fucking lame. He is kind of... Even his motives is kind of lame. It's like, so apparently his new goal is to turn everyone on Earth into a spark doll. Hmm. So that time can go on forever. Wasn't that his fucking objective in... Or no, his objective in the first season was, oh, I'm gonna make time the wor- time stop so that just everyone just stays the same forever. Yeah. Wow. And what, it's like... You wanna know the sad part? Hmm? That sounds... That doesn't really sound that whole evil. No. And just, yeah, everyone's in this episode. All the Victorian people are in this episode... Fucking Chiki Sabase, Misisu, you're in fucking Kenta show. I'm like, where the fuck have you been this whole fucking show? You know who didn't show up though? Who? Officer Kikaki, uh, Officer Kaki. Eh. The principal. He he's still uh, he's still busy patrolling the school that's not there anymore. He caught <laughs> he caught his granddad. Uh, and then just the yeah, the, totally pr- the, the principal still is in like a mental asylum for like everything that happened to her being possessed by Dark Bluegill. What is this like Terminator Two? Yeah, exactly. It's real, I'm telling you, it's real. You're all gonna die. Just sees him, start screaming. Oh god, yeah. Um, oh, and man. just um, like me, Suzu's like helping people, like feeding, like uh, she gives like a little girl like a rice ball because she's like hungry. Hell, even the pregnant lady from the episode Goki, the Goki-focused episode, was fucking in it. And she was, like, dying, and then Sho, like, gave her his, like, Victorian crystal and was like, this will stabilize you for now. 
And I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, oh, thank you. Sure. And so then, like, the Victorian people are, like, standing down, like, still in Vic- Victoria land or whatever like that. And just, like, My like are you guys going to do anything? And then the queen's just like, let's, yes. go to, let's go to the surface. Wait, really? And just, yeah, so, like, uh, he caught, like, Dark Lugo comes out. He's just like, oh, you have no chance of beating me. And then uh, Dark, uh, like, he kind of, like, fires a blast at Ginga and Victory, but then... Ging and Victory, like, protect Sho and Hikaru by, like, ejecting them out of themselves, and then they get turned to stone, because they run out of energy. Because that's how it works. Yeah, so, like, they're still in stone, but then their spark dolls are on the ground of them, and it's, oh, fucking, it's weird. So then, like, Hikaru and Sho... Are like, you oh. real? Yeah, it's like, oh, Hikaru and Sho, what are we gonna do? And then, like... They're like, oh, we have we have a plan. We're gonna like help everyone and stuff like that. And then they get like a message from uh, One Zero, and she's like, I've integrated myself with Dark Lugia. I'll, I'll be able to, like, you'll be able to destroy her, but destroy it. But like, I have to destroy myself too. And they're like, what? No. And she's like, this is my choice. I decided to do this. Or like, Tomia said that. And it's like, it's her decision. I'm like, I'm like, shut up, Tomia. No, no, no. You know what I just see now? Hmm? Just. The scene from Guardians of the Galaxy. That's the most real, authentic laugh that I have ever done. Because that's not a plan. It's barely even a concept. Um, and then, like, Chikasa just like, Oh, I don't know what I can do. Oh, I know what I can do. I'll just play that song again. And she, over like, and over. Yeah, and she plays it, like, on do the... Do I have um, any other songs? Yeah. And, like, Kent is filming it. And, like, Kenta, like, shows himself on the camera. And he goes, like, oh, this is Kenta! <laughs> yeah, Kenta! He can't hear you. Yeah, Kenta! Go down! <laughs> Don't do it! Ginga, he's bigger than you! <laughs> well, Dark Miguel is bigger. <laughs> Don't do it, Ginga, he's bigger than you! <laughs> Oh my god, that's so great. This goes out to all the spark dolls out there. You see Ginga Rav on stage punch her right in the face. <laughs> then there was that date last Saturday. Oh, look at that handsome Ultra. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Um, so then, some, like, somehow the Dark Leo resurrects his old generals. So we get, like, the super flamboyant one, the bat one, uh... Fucking, I forgot his name. The, the one who speaks English sometimes, and then All right, uh, aliens the, that time. There was Alien Valky. Valky, that's right. There was Gray, who was the alien Knackle. Yeah. Alien Icarus. Oh, Icarus, yeah. And apparently, al- the aliens that time had a name. Burmy. 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 So, so guess, uh, guess the one from Friends, the uh, friends that were forgotten, just didn't want to come back. Yeah. Fuck that, that's not canon. <laughs> nope. Um, so then, yeah, so they, like, attack them with a bunch of mooks, and then, like, the, the P, UPG people are just like, oh, we'll take care of it. And then, like, everyone starts fighting. Like, Hikaru fights for a bit. Sh- sh- uh, Sho fights for a bit. Tomia goes all Michael Jackson Fucking on them. Fucking Tomia starts doing, like, flips and, like, kicks, spin kicks, and I'm just like, No! No, 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 no. You can't do any of that shit. <laughs> John the, the most you were able to ever fucking do was just fire your stupid tablet gun and fight in a giant robot. I will not believe for a second that you have any type of physical it's been two martial years. prowess. I don't give a shit. I don't care. <laughs> You really just don't like Tommy. I fucking hate him. He's so fucking boring. He's so stupid. Like and they'll think his love interest is Mana. And like all he wants to do is kill Ginga. Like like he like he sure it doesn't show in this season, but like deep down. Deep down he just wants to kill just, just, why, just why don't you like Ginga? Because I wanna be like you, okay? I wanna be like you. Yeah, he like tries it himself, like ultra alive, he fucking fucking kills him. Ends up him. In, no ends up in coma. No, no. Ooby do. I want to be like you. Whoop de doo. Just starts crying. Hell, even the Victorians start fighting. Like the the fucking uh, Yamashina or whatever, like that. He like Ka- fucking. Kamashina. No, Kamashina. He like he fights us. And then the Queen just like points her hand out, just dissolves them. And I was like, holy shit. How'd you do that? Oh, did I forget to mention I'm the god of destruction. 
Oh, by the way, we have a uh, tournament to go to in like 30 minutes. Yeah, it's just like one of the angels of fucking destruction. Like, she's like Weiss's race. No, 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 no. She would be a god of destruction that would make Kamushin her angel. Oh, her angel, yeah. But I just, I, like, props to the Victorian queen for being able to just be like, yeah, no, I can just point my hand out and you dissolve into nothing. Hey, at least it's not like Princess Shayla and tossing out that freaking karate kick. So then, uh, and so then we get, like, a final transformation of Gengar and Victory, and, like, it's cool, like, you know, sh- uh, Karu shoots out Gengar, but and then Sho-, Sho finally shouts out Victory. And I was like, yeah. And they fight, and, you know, they use effective stuff, and then they kick... Ma- they kick, sacrifice they kick Yeah, and then they kick Vic Lugiel's ass. Yeah. And then everything's and that, and happy. That- Go, everyone's rebuilding. The Victorian's like, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna help humanity and like work together with them and stuff and I'm like I'm like wait you're gonna like fucking bring your people humans down to fucking Victorian land like, oh no right? oh no d- d- no oh no we're being we're, we're sealing ourselves <laughs> we're sealing ourselves to live forever hey go go fuck yourself it's kind of like a racist thing back in the 50s and 60s oh god <laughs> hey, uh, so no homers club yeah um, and the show kind of just ends. Yeah, like, I mean, Hikaru and, uh... Show. Show have, like, a thing where it's like, oh, we'll, like, we'll always be, like, good allies, like, until we meet again. And he's like, yup. It's like, wait, what? It, wait, you guys are leaving? That, 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 that's, that's it? That's it? It's over? What the fuck? <laughs> uh, but what happened was... It's implied in the movie that we're watching next week that Hikaru travels the world. Yep, because that's what that's Hikaru does best. I'm the best. <laughs> I'm the best. Man, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't even end with Hikaru and Show either. It ends with Tomoya getting the Victorian shard that Queen Kisara had, and it's revealed that. Mana saved a copy of herself in her crystal, in her Victorian shirt. I was shirt. so happy. Oh, yeah, and, like, she, like, as before she was dying or whatever, blowing up, whatever, she, like, sheds a tear. She's like, this is what tears are like. And then just blows stuff. I'm like, I was like, hotness, no! And then she came back and I was like, yeah, hotness, yes! No, no, it's just... Does she show up in X? I think so. Oh, fuck yeah. No, no, it's just, 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 I can make a few jokes here. Just a single tear. So these are tears. Wait, that is not while their dad's gasp. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just. Oh, uh, see, it's a tear. On their memory deleted. <laughs> oh, also, we kind of got the closest thing where, like, Misuzu is, like, wishing Kara good luck, and then they, they hold hands. And I was like, oh, the shipping's real! Okay, the one thing that bugs me, though, mm-hmm. is that when Misuzu sees Hikaru show up at the safe area, She's not even, like, shocked, or, like, like, she's not like, oh my god, Hikaru, I'm fa- like, thank god that you're alright, and just runs stores and, like, gives him a hug. It's just, oh, Hikaru, you're here. Hey, how's everything going? No, but I like that they held hands. World's coming to an end. You could at least run towards him and give him a hug knowing that he's safe. Yeah, but then, like, I think it made up for it with the hand-holding, so that was nice. Oh yeah, and Ultraman Taro finally decides to leave Hikaru. Yeah, and Gengar's like, oh, we'll be like, and they're like, oh, we'll be, if you ever need us, we'll, we'll come to your call. No, 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 it's just Taro that leaves. Gengar's still there. Gengar's just like, fuck off. <laughs> no, no, Gengar's like... <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> He's just... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> sure. Uh, sure. Uh. <laughs> that was fucking crazy time. So Taro's just like... <laughs> but uh, Gengar's like... Oh yeah, I forgot to mention Dark Lugia is my dark counterpart. Wait, what? Yeah. Well, man. you can't have light without like a shadow looming behind you, you know. No, it's like, oh, so you guys were like two sides of the same coin. We are that coin. We were one coin. You dumb shit. You dumb. Oh my goodness! No wonder you travel. You're so fucking. How you survive out in the wild? Fuck. You know what? I'm done. I'm going back to the future. How far into the future? The future! 2019! <laughs> 2019! Um. And yeah, the show just kind of ends. Yeah, and just. I, I'm kind of disappointed that the show just abruptly ends. 
Um, but yeah, so that was, that was Ginga S. It was alright. Mm-hmm. Like, there are some highlights and stuff, but overall, I just, like... Eh. Like, like I mentioned before... It was better than Ginga, I'll give it yeah. that. Which, that's what I said as well when I watched it for the first time. Is it better than the first season of Ginga? In some ways, yes. Some ways. I prefer in the first season where everyone was kind of buddy-buddy with each other, where here, it's just... Hikaru doesn't really hang out with Goki or Orisa. It's like, I wish there was more of like a bonding thing. Like, give us a... Give us an episode where, where they're just bonding. There's no Kaijus, there's no Ultraman. It's just... Hikaru wants to be more friendly with Arisa and Goki. Mm-hmm. So after work, they go on a little adventure. Yep. And just like, I don't know, like, I, I was into the show, uh, uh, when we started this, I was hyped for victory, but at the end, in the end, I was just kind of like... He, he, it, became, like he, became victory, the, no, he became the specter. He, he was, he's cool, but the character show who you was him, he was disappointing. He just ended up being really bland and generic. And he he doesn't like do that. anything. He doesn't do anything. He, he honestly does not go through an arc. No. Like, yeah, you could say he started off being all grumpy and such, but that was because he was in a world he didn't really know. He should have just been his own show, honestly. You know what they should have done? Hmm? You know Kamushin? The guy that did nothing throughout this entire show? Make him his mentor. Yeah. Make him, like, I was the original bearer of Ultraman Victory. That would have been cool. Because, like, you show him in the opening, and you're like, he doesn't do anything, he just stands there and looks grumpy. In which, that leads to one of the other problems in Ginga S. The Victorians do nothing. Nothing. Like, absolutely nothing. Yep. They only became important because it's like, oh yeah, if they take the Victorian, then that goes our world as well. It's like, okay, but... It's proven that you guys can literally just come up to the surface. You guys can breathe up here. There's only four of you, including that one guard. And, like, me and Garo both being in agreement the best episode of this entire series was the Gong Q episode. And it wasn't even about Ginga! Yeah! It was about just this regular fucking guy who gets turned to a kaiju and he bonds with this little boy and teaches him how to ride a bike. It's E.T. It was amazing. No, that episode was fucking fantastic. It was great. It was better than the entirety of Ginga. I like the Metron episode. Cause, cause the Metron episode was even fucking super good. Like when when you when you hum, make these kaiju's, you make them you make you humanize them. Like they're amazing characters. It's just like I said in those two episodes. I like it because the characters are flawed. Hikaru and all the other characters aren't really that flawed. No. They have zero flaws. Rissa was boring. Goki was just too, like, hot-headed. Didn't like that. It's just, they're, they could have done something better. And the captain, did, the captain did nothing. He was just, like, generic as captain could be. Like, at least in fucking... Like, that, that, that's why, like, you know what, you know what, actually thinking about it, like, uh, when I was listening to an old episode of Cast Ranger, we were talking about, like, the story and premise for Orb. Like... We, you, you mentioned about the something search people, and me and Raven just kind of laughed out loud, and we're like, that is fucking stupid. Like, they're not even an organization. And then we watched Orb, and I was like, I fucking love these characters. Something search, SSP is fucking awesome. Yeah, because they're actually, like, they're all likable characters. They all know- love Naomi, love Jenna, love Shin, love Naomi's mom, love fucking- Shibikawa. Shibikawa. Like, like those characters are likable because, you know, number one, they're already friends. Number two, they're like they're not that good of like yes, they are friends, but they do get on each other's backs. Yeah, like Hikaru just shows up and then they're like, Oh, you're part of our organization now. Oh, it's cause you know Tomia. I'm like, ooh. Uh, okay. Tomia Tom, I didn't give a shit about and just yeah. So like overall for me, Ultraman Gengas was meh. Yeah. I, I would I watch it again. Probably not. Probably just for the Gone Q episode, honestly. Exactly. Um, or the Metron episode. But yeah, I wouldn't even probably call Victory one of my favorite Ultramans now, just because, I don't know, he wasn't as like awesome as I wanted him to be. So. I think I just had too many high expectations for him. I still like his design. Victory, Victory's design is still fucking awesome. But just, yeah, show, show was a disappointment. So. 
So, so this is something that I, I quickly want to mention. Mm-hmm. But when I was watching Ginga and Ginga S for the first time. Oh, when you binged it? Yeah, when I binged. In a fucking day. I binged Ginga S in a day. Yep. 16 episodes. That, that was like eight hours, mm-hmm. I think. I can't remember. I need to go back to that post that I made of it. But uh, just when I was watching it, I literally thought of how can I adapt this for an American audience and how can I make it better? Mm-hmm. And you know what I did with Victory? Mm-hmm. I mean that he was a member, that he was from the, the same future that Ginga was and he had to bring him back. Oh, that's cool. But like, I love the concept of Victory. I like that he was just like, he's an ancient Ultraman or something like that who came and then he was just like worshipped as a god from these people. It just, that was never really, like, like that, that that's another thing that was bad about this. We didn't get anything about these Victorians. Like we barely know anything about. Them. This show should have just been Ultraman Victory. Leave Ginga um the twelve episodes that it fucking had, and then just made Ultraman Victory a new show. That would have been fucking awesome. Well, like like oh the world that you know is pretty neat. That is until you notice what's underground and the whole entire city. Like there's a legit city underground. Everything's made of stone. There's more people. And we only like, see the same four fucking people the whole time. Yeah, in the same set. It's like, Ugh. make show like a rogue, like a flunky out of an academy or something. And like, he ends up on the surface by accident. And then like, when he's about to die, the god of like the, the city, which is basically just Ultraman Victory, he chooses him and like, he helps him survive. Yeah. And make like, it something like that. Yeah. Um, or, or, no, no. The world's being polluted so so bad up on the ground, it's weakening the connection between our world and their world, and the kaijus are coming through now. And, just, like, Exceller... Exceller was cool. I, like, I don't think we'll ever get, like, a villain who looks like him or like him ever again, and, like, I liked him! I thought he was fun. I loved his voice, I loved the way he talked, liked, liked his, like, kind of shifty eyes he constantly had, and I liked that he was just a brain in a giant mech suit. Just... just- like like that clip that you showed Patrick, it's like the machinations of my mind. It, yeah, that was Exceller. He knew what he wanted to do all along. And just every single person that worked for him was his pawn. It's like, oh yeah. Miss you, Booth, too. And like he even knew. It's like, okay, you guys have a limit to how many times you guys can fuck up. If you screw up this amount of times, you're dead. Yeah, and then one. Zero, I will literally kill you. And one zero was hot. Yeah, uh, she had a nice pair of legs on her. I, I like that. Luckily, Ultraman Ginga S was a bit successful to the fact that there was one more show. Yeah, Ultraman X. And then we got Orb, and then Orb just cemented Ultraman as being we're back, baby. We're and better it, than ever. Because yeah, Ultraman X uh, better than Ginga S. Mm. Let me say that in some ways. No, but, it looks it looks cool. I like the but, concept that it's like pretty much Kamen Rider Drive but Ultraman. But it has the same problem as Ginga S though. Too many characters that don't do a whole much. Mm. At least they only have one Ultraman. Yeah. One. Mm. And then there's freaking all the other cameos. Um, yeah. I guess we can call it episodes. So Ginga S, I wouldn't recommend it personally. Oh. But there's other Ultraman to watch. Sad part is we still have two more things to talk about for Ginga S until we're done. That's fine. At least the show's done. No more. Yeah, at least the show is done. Go watch episode 12. Episode 12 is great. Yeah, go watch Gonkyu's Tears. Gonkyu's Tears. It's great. That's why we got a vinyl Gonkyu. Is that awesome? So that was episode 48 of Ultra Ranger. You can't trust anyone named Aizen. Yep. Uh, you can follow me at twitter.com slash all about all the run. I'm tr- uh, at lane double underscore. Uh, you can check out our other Facebook pages at facebook.com slash rscastranger. You can check out older episodes at castranger.podbean.com. Uh, you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash radio sentai castranger. And you can buy some of our merchandise at tpublic.com. At tpublic.com. And uh, this week... If you are in the Hamilton area, which you're probably not, then again, the handful of people actually listen to Ultra Ranger, I thank you. But uh, if you're going to be in the Hamilton, Ontario area this weekend of July 20... 
Uh, I need to look up the dates quickly. Uh, between July 27th through 29th, a few of us will be at a convention uh, called Con Bravo, in which hopefully it's a pretty good time. I'm I'm doing a Tokusatsu panel on Saturday. And I, I will not be attending Con Bravo personally just because money reasons. Yeah. In which uh, I am doing a Tokusatsu panel on Saturday with the awesome Vangelis nice. on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, schwa for now. Schwa for now, peoples.